you're wondering how to do this infusion, perhaps you just want to learn the concepts and techniques to add to your knowledge. Or maybe like myself, you came from After Effects and you just need to know how to use the tools with Infusion. Ever since I've moved further away from After Effects, I've wanted to learn more Fusion um, by practicing techniques and concepts more. So every time I come across a cool transition or an idea of inspiration, or in this case, a comment from a viewer, I want to just take that idea into Resolve slash Fusion to see if I can poke around and figure out how to do it on my own. The inspiration for this transition that I made came from another video where I had poked around and kind of theorized how it might have been done. Um, and it did take me a while to figure out how to do it in Fusion, even though the concept is pretty simple. I just have a hard time with the tools for now. So let's take a look at the video. Uh, there are a number of transitions and all of them are pretty simple, like just basic masking techniques. But this one here in particular was kind of interesting and intrigued me the most. Um, and that's the one that I wanted to try and replicate in Fusion. Note the colors, the movement, uh, the 3D scene, the lights, all of that is kind of important as to how they got away with making this so seamless. I did note that I could go in one of two directions. I could create like a 3D scene uh, and I'll demonstrate this later in the video or I could do this in 2D and have some motion zooming in and out, kind of like a fake 3D. I'll also be going over that later. So I wanted to go over just a brief overview, just so you understand the structure and the concepts behind what I did. Here are the two clips I used, and you can see in the first one, I like that the camera flew past an obstruction. And for the second clip, I like this one because it did mimic a similar motion from the first clip. Looking at our node tree, you can see we took our two clips in. One of them is duplicated just so that we can create a sandwich with like a rotoscope around the third one. I had to throw a time speed on the 60 frames per second clip just to bring it up to speed. Then I merged them all over a background. I took the right clip and I wanted to designate that one as the rotoscope. I threw a rotoscope over it. Then I wanted to track a middle one so that it looked like it came out from behind the rotoscope. So I used a tracker node to track the first clip and then attached the transform node from the middle clip to that. And then I just animated some masks around that middle clip so that it would reveal itself a little better. And then I finally added one more transform node just to zoom in on the whole comp itself. First, create your new fusion composition. Name it whatever you'd like. Make it an arbitrarily long duration length. Then go into your media pool, grab your two clips and rename them appropriately just to keep organized. Then if your clips are untrimmed, go through them and trim them yourself. This is kind of a tedious process, but you get a hang of it when you see the controls. You can see where you want to start is here on the trim tool. Just trim the in and out looking at the timeline so you know where you're trimming. Then what I did was duplicate my first clip here as well as rearrange them for organization's sake. Bring in your background layer just to throw everything on top of that. Here I made my background the resolution of my smallest clip, which happens to be two and a half K. And because one clip was shot in 60 frames per second, I threw a time speed on it just to speed it up Next, we're getting ready for the next process, which is rotoscoping the obstruction in your first clip. In my case, it's this canyon here. Here's the process of me rotoscoping it. And here's the result of what that rotoscope looks like. Merge that over your sequence here. Throw the same time speed on it because this is the same 60 FPS clip. For this clip, you can see I like the motion of it. However, it does need to be flipped to match the other clip. So that's pretty simple with just a transform node. And here in the settings is the flip. I'm gonna downscale it a little bit just to see what's going on. And when you turn all of them on, you can see the idea we're going for here. I'm throwing an elliptical mask on it just to feather out the edges so I don't see the hard edges. I also need to start my clip a little later. I don't need to start it that early, so I'm going to slide it over here in the keyframe panel. And what I wanted to do to better blend the middle video clip to swing out from behind the obstruction, I wanted to use a tracker node and track the original video just to make it feel like it's coming out from behind it a little better. But I wanted it to ease out, so I grabbed the original keyframes from the tracker node, and you can see I just eased out the top end of it. Now here's the critical step. 
you go to your transform node from the middle clip and you right click on the center parameter and you connect to your tracker offset position. That way this clip is using the tracking data from the tracker on the first clip. But you're gonna offset it a little bit with these parameters down here so that it is a little bit more behind the obstruction. Then just keyframe the size a little bit so that it goes from smaller to a little bit bigger. And here do the same for the elliptical mask on that middle clip. Essentially go from blended to non-blended. You can combine multiple masks by chaining them like this and then grabbing the first clip and doing the blend as minimum. That way you can combine multiple masks for the same clip. Last thing you really need to do is grab a transform node after your last merge so that you can slowly zoom in on your middle clip and fill the frame with it. Come out of your fusion composition, right click your clip, make a compound clip, go into the read time speed controls, and we're gonna make a speed ramp just to help blend things a little bit better. Ease out the curves and you're good to go. Definitely find better footage than I have here. This was just two random clips that I found on my hard drive that worked kind of well. Uh, it was more just for the proof of concept. Um, and also work a little bit harder on the rotor than I did. Work a little bit harder on the smoothness of the transitions and the splines and the color and the sound. Mess around with random things that help with uh, blending this like motion blur and color correction. Uh, you can even do it without the speed ramp that I did at the end, and I thought it looked uh, okay as well. Now it's worth noting in After Effects you would be working with a lot of pre-comps by now. In Fusion, each node is like a pre-comp, the way that you can tether it to another node. And here's another example of a composition I did using 3D planes rather than just 2D. Although it took me a while, I did enjoy trying to figure out how to do this transition. Um, it was pretty basic, but it's because I'm a little unfamiliar with how Fusion does their tools. Uh, if you see any transition out there, uh, let me know because I'm, I'm curious. What's the actual storytelling purpose of a transition like this anyways? If you take a whack at this, just at me. I'm, I want to see your work. Take it easy.